Hollywood, California, Meltdown Comics, Nerd Melt Theater, Harmontown is now in session. Please welcome to the stage. Please welcome to the stage. Please welcome to the stage. The mayor of Harmontown, Dan Harmon. Yeah, yeah. I put my hat on my head. Uh, I took your mama and too bad. I said, I started rubbing her shoulders because she was tense. I said, Mama, you're tense. She said, tense rhymes with tense. I said, go in the back and sleep in the tents. There were two tents that she had to choose from. There was a wigwam on the side, and she wasn't. All right, okay, don't. Uh, <clears throat> it was a noble experiment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know. I, 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 would, I felt there was a chance there that something magical was about yeah, to happen. Yeah, no, I, I, I overthought it. I overthought it. I was like, wow, there's a lot of people The Netflix that's doing good on Netflix, that movie. I guess there's a lot of people. Maybe they think that the rapping will be better in person. <laughs> uh, I, started, I started, there was a feedback loop. I think the I rapping think is just as good in person as just listening to it. Uh, fuck you, acknowledged. <laughs> Uh, no, I, 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 I would like to continue to experiment with the idea of me coming up with something to do, right? Like that. Okay. So don't don't give up on do me. Do you want to start over? Do you want to, should we start? No, no. Well, time? I mean, uh, is, is that too inorganic? How about this? Go out and enter from the street. Go uh, walk out there. That's actually not a bad idea. Go out the side door. <laughs> Spend a moment, Dan, in the alley. And pretend like you're in Brooklyn or something. Like, you're like pretend you're some hard-ass streets. All right, Harmon has left the room. The door is shut. Okay, everybody, let's hide. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. Take two. Nerd Melt Comics. Meltdown Theater, Hollywood, California. Shit's about to get real. Harmon Town is once again for the same second time on the same night in session. <laughs> Entering from a completely different door, from the alleyway, not the, not the cosseted, comfortable green room, yeah. but with the mean streets of the alley, yeah. off Sierra yeah. Bonita Drive, Ben oh. Harmon. Money, drugs, done it, drugs, drugs, money, drugs, Brooklyn, not drugs, off from the street, from the beat to the heat, saw your mama, I said, look at her cheat, she's cheated on her SATs. I said, bitch, please, you're never gonna get in law school doing that. She took her head down, pulled up her hat, and there was a little robot under her skin. He said, oh, shit, you moving in? You're gonna come inside and see what controls her. Oh, shit, she's a giant robot. <laughs> that was a little more... That was 75% better than the first one. Yeah. I think yeah. you, you, you harnessed something angry and wonderful. I, I, I turned into DMX out there, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, for, the, for me, that's what Brooklyn's about. <laughs> I, I was like a dog, like a, like a fighting dog. I wish we had four more rooms for you to enter from, just to see. <laughs> like if I came down on a cotton ball yeah. uh, moon like Katy Perry, would I, would I, would I, would I have a hit on my hands? If we, if, can, you, can you enter out of the bathroom and try it again? Or do you want to just, uh, no, or do you take us diminishing returns now? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> also, you, you're wildly out of breath right now. Yeah, right? like I, I, I moved from, yeah, I was like... One of the secrets of the start of the show is that I'm I'm right there off camera in the show. I saw it to minimize the uh, exercise, uh, <laughs> but that was twice as far as I've walked <laughs> for a long time. Um, so um, I'm not gonna. And I'll say right right away, as just in case everybody panics and goes like, "Oh shit, I'm behind," and I I don't want this major thing spoiled. But uh, I just finished watching all of this Jinx thing with the Jinx guy with our Bobby Durst. Yeah, who who you know that blinking thing? That is very Adam Goldberg. Like, <laughs> if I, anybody who's actually s you mean talked to Adam Scott Goldberg, Scott Robinson or what, 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 what's your name out there? John Robinson. I, I thought for sure that was. The, I mean, oh, oh he had the, I, thought, I thought I thought Adam Goldberg had a new uh, <laughs> identity. It was like that is the, I think how this starts. Like, <laughs> it's disassociation. Like he just starts going like, aren't we all pretzels? <laughs> and, and then it's like he who gives a shit. Like a, uh, but it, yeah, that guy. Yeah. If you've ever had a conversation, like, uh, do you guys I guess know what we're talking about the, the, the Bob Jorst, uh, he maybe yeah. possibly killed nineteen people. I, you should definitely check it out. It's not like I mean, the serial thing was amazing. 
and fun to take part in. And after a while, the reason to take part in it was because you would be the only person that didn't know what anyone else was talking about. But this really is, even if you were on a desert island, wait, by the time you get to the end, it really is quite, <laughs> it's pretty incredible. It's like the serial thing is kind of like, eh, like, 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 it's sort of like the circumstances are the same uh, at the end as at the beginning. Like, they're just reopening a, a confusing murder, and you you leave confused in serial. Um, the the this is you do not. <laughs> it's cra- fucking crazy. Like the last the last five minutes are amazing. But that so that's all I'll say about the actual content. You don't have to like like worry about spoilers or anything. But I did w- while we were watching, and I got into the strangest d- debate with uh, Aaron because I was kept. They kept on, you know, like. He was on trial at a certain point for uh, for murdering a guy, and they thought it was a slam dunk case because he dismembered him. And so, and it was like, and they kept they kept stressing that they're like, well, this is the this is the body that he dismembered, so it's open and shut. And they kept going like, how I don't understand what these. And Aaron and I got into this really not intense argument, but it was like just really we weren't seeing each other's side of it because I was like, if if I if I ever need or want to kill someone. Let's say need. <laughs> like I'm going to I'm going to do everything I can to do it right. I'm going to I'm going to follow through. I, I assume, like I, I, I would, I would have decided that someone needed to die. So th- this, this would be a first, a first degree premeditated murder. We're talking yeah, about. Yeah, or right? even I guess if, it, yeah, well, yeah. Or, the, or, or if the shit went down, you went fuck it. This guy has to go. Bang! And now, now you got to deal with the aftermath of that. Yeah, well, maybe that's the, maybe that's the big clincher. Is it's like okay, this guy, but it's like who, if you, yeah. <laughs> it's I think it's just let, let's say it's, let, like, let's say it's the latter. Let's say that like. You had a reason to hide something so big, like another murder, for instance, <laughs> and and you and and, and and you told a guy too much, right. and he was like, "I'm going to blackmail you." And I'm like, "Well, d- please don't do that because you might not like what happens." And then <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and he'd be like, and "Are you me?" And I'd be like, "Are you blackmailing me? Yeah. Are, are you going to murder me? <laughs> are you going to blackmail me?" Well, uh, uh, let, because, let, because the last person didn't blackmail me. <laughs> You know, so she, you're she, you're, she you're in was, trouble here. She was about to. She uh, was about to. Yeah, she was about to. Are you blackmailing me? I'm about to. Uh, well, okay. So you're neck and neck with a dead person. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Heck, hey, let's call the whole thing off. I forget we ever. Let's just go to Chili's, have okay. lunch. Great. So here's the thing. I will know if you're blackmailing me if you say to me. Look, I'll, I'll just say this. I'll say this. I'm a little. I'm I'm, I'm behind in the rent. I could use fifty thousand. If let's say fifty thousand dollars fell out of the sky right now, I would know exactly what to do with that. As opposed to walking down maybe to the local police department and saying that your name is Dan. Is that Park. what you're going to do? You're uh, going to talk to the police? Okay, yes, I'm going to do. That. <laughs> Give me fifty thousand dollars, and I won't do it. All right. Well, I guess the, I, am I blackmailing you now? That's blackmail. Let me get my checkbook. It's <laughs> <laughs> is it in the drawer with the gun? I, I don't. I don't have a gun drawer. <laughs> I have a checkbook drawer. <laughs> my my gun is in it because it's a uh, it's something it's another thing you use sometimes um, in an emergency. <laughs> oh shit! God. Wait wait you missed you, oh shit you, for, the first one you missed the second one you got me. Ah, son of a bitch! Should have asked for less money. God. <laughs> all right, so now you got a dead guy on the floor of your apartment, right. ble- bleeding all over the joint. Right. You're dressed as a woman. <laughs> You've been going under a fake name. Now you got some fucking fancy footwork to do. Yeah. Now what's what, what's your first move? I would I would do what he did. Go buy a bow saw and start chopping fuckers up. I think. Now 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 Aaron's point is that no no normal human being could get past that point. And my point is that yeah, that's why so many people get caught. Like the people that, that like. The people that get away with murder are the people that go that extra mile <laughs> post-murder. Like, they do horrible things. Like, you've taken a human life, and now that person is meat, and now... And so, but th- so that's why I'm confused is when I, in the courtroom when they try to... They bring that out, like, and then you know what he did? He, j- try, he tried to keep doing it. He tried to finish. He tried to get away with it. Yeah. He took the head, and he put it in a bowling bag, and he threw it on the roof... Not once, but twice. He missed the first time. I was like, yeah, it's hard. It's, he had a difficult time. He's trying to get away. He didn't walk in here. Uh, he, w- it wasn't, he, tra- he killed the guy, and he wanted to get away with it. All right. 
Uh, I just not that, that whole group, the goal, because it's like you're talking about a, a jury of people who are all supposed to sit there and think, oh, yeah, that is fucked up. Because if I killed someone and they're all running a simulation of them killing someone, it's like, you're already fucked up people. Uh, and, oh, I wouldn't be able to do this or that. Like, tell me more about where your lines are, like, like, like around the, the horrible primatological act of t- extinguishing another primate. Like, oh, what, what, are your, what are your pet peeves right after the, after the life goes out of their eyes? And it's like, like these people that, like, kill someone normally, the neurotypical murderer, the heteronormative mainstream murderer... Uh, the the one percent or ninety nine percent I don't know okay I went too far with that <laughs> the the, uh, the what do they do they kill somebody kind of in a fit of a you know rage they don't do it for any reason and then they go oh no oh god I can't believe I did that well what so I'm supposed to make that person senator and send the other person to the electric chair the other person is playing chess with life. Who's this crazy person that can, like, kill their best friend because they're in a bad mood and then be like, whoops! <laughs> that person has the hearts and minds of the jury? Like, like yeah, that's dangerous well, to the, me. The idea is uh, we, we take it easy on people who confess to a crime as opposed to people who elaborately try to, like, hide the fact. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, what, what better way to keep getting away with murder than to never murder someone again? Isn't there a kind of self-policing to a, to a <laughs> successful murderer? <laughs> Well, apparently not. And, and <laughs> not in this guy. That's why we're so fascinated with this guy, though. I think, I think, I think this guy is a little cuckoo pants. And I oh, think no, I, he's not even good at like, getting away no. with it or anything. What, what, okay. he, what he's good at is having loads of money and having really good defense attorneys. And that's, that's the thing. Like, the prosecution absolutely screwed that one. The guy chopped somebody up into 100 pieces and threw him in a trash bag and threw him in the water and they that's floated. Always the cra- isn't it, you know, you always hear these stories about like, like this whole myth of like, oh, these rich people that can afford these rich lawyers. And they, but it's not like they're Clarence Darrow like doing these tricks. Like whenever you see the real life incarnation of it, it's always just like the people who work for the prosecution are totally incompetent. You can't believe or understand what they're doing. The jury's totally confused. And a, t- a rational, normal person with an IQ over 100 stands up and represents the killer and says, guys, Let's get down to brass tacks. Here's the rules. If you, if you, if you didn't find a head, you can't say. That's the rules. Sorry. Uh, and, 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 and then they're if like, you can't find a head. Yeah, he's you, right. No, it's right there in the rules. And then everyone's like, you slick-talking city lawyer. But you, oh, you Dershowitz, you got him. You got him. Like, no, your fucking city employees are you're, you're, they're idiots. They're like these like we, weird people. Yeah, like, but what was her name? Was it Marsha Clark or whoever? The OJ yeah, uh, prosecutor? Yeah, like, were like, they, I mean, they fucking blew it. They blew it. And they had our friend Cato on, on, the, uh, on the stand. He didn't know anything, and they made a big chump out of him, and he was better for the defense. He ended up being worse for the prosecution because he didn't know anything. He, he told me the whole story. I, I hung out with Cato the first time I met him. I met him at the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> as, as one does. And we hung out, and then we went to uh, Mel's Diner. Which I, is it Mel's Diner? I think it was still – maybe it was, when it was back when it was Ben Franks. Maybe it was Mel's Diner then. And we sat sat there, and he told me the whole story. He told me the whole day of OJ knocks on his door and says, "Hey, uh, Cato, uh, you know if you uh, if you're gonna use the hot tub, you got to you got to turn it off afterwards." And Cato's like, "I always turn it off." Like I mean, he's Cato's really smart. He remembers everything. He sounds like like a surfer kind of bimbo we do, but he's quite intelligent and super thoughtful. And he's like, "I when I use it, I'm." I, I, I always turn it off, and I knew that I had. And it was like, also, he never came down to the back house to speak to me. So then he goes, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought I did, but I didn't. He's like, well, next time you do that, you uh, you got to do that. But he looked kind of out of sorts and weird. So then he goes away, and then a while later, he comes back down and says, hey, uh, do you have change for 100? And at that point, Cato's like, I just feel like he just wanted to, like, prove. Like, look, looking back on it, he was just trying to prove, like, I was here. Hey. And he goes, I, I was like, no, I don't have change for 100. He's broke-ass Cato Kalin living in the back uh, house of, of uh, his place because he's good with kids, and Nicole Simpson loved Cato, and he was great with the children. Uh, uh, O.J. was never there. Uh, so O.J. also, he felt like, was uh, having him followed. Like, uh, Cato felt like he was pretty sure that he was being watched because he was super jealous of Nicole, who was cheating on him. Uh, and then he said, no, I don't have change for 100. Uh, he's like, why? He said, well, I want to go to McDonald's and get some food, which sounds like alibi, like establishing. And Cato doesn't know this because he doesn't know a murder's about to happen or two murders. And he goes, oh, I'll, I'll just go with you. I'm hungry too. And OJ goes, ooh. Uh, uh, 
Uh, uh, okay, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And they get in the car and they order the food and he eats the food and he eats it in the drive, like the drive through. They order the food in the drive through and instantly eats his filet of fish or quarter pound or whatever he gets at, at the drive through, which nobody has ever done. Nobody eats it before you leave the parking lot. <laughs> Guilty, sir. So, it, so he tells me the whole story, and then, and then his, uh, a friend of his, this, he's good friends with Nicole, she nearly gets decapitated, and this other guy, the, the waiter, Ron, uh, wasn't it Ron Goldman? He gets murdered. So as he's telling me the story at this diner at 4 a.m., a guy comes over to the table and goes like, Hey, Cato! Cato! Hey, yo, man, um, I, I have an old school uh, O.J. Simpson jersey signed by him. How much do you think that's worth? <laughs> and Cato's like, I don't know, man. He's like, whoa, 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 sorry, asshole. <laughs> and, 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 and the guy walked away. I go, you just told me about your friend being nearly decapitated. And then some guy walks up and says, how much is an OJ thing? And called you an asshole. And he goes, it happens every day. <laughs> Once a day for 10 years. Yeah, now I, remember, what? I remember back then because people felt like it was, I, you know, he was just a party to this whole circus. So, like, I remember back then, like. Him saying that people would, you know, drive by and yell stuff out the window. That was, that was like years after, but yeah. it was like they associated him with the. All he was was a guy that happened to hear a thump on the wall, and he was he was around when it happened. Didn't know anything, and they made him a hostile witness. He's the only guy I ever saw. Like even even Jack Black, who's like probably like like with the time that I was I would be hanging out in public with Jack Black is probably the most. That's probably the most famous guy I've ever been in public with at at the time of their the height of their fame and and like. Height of like people, just strangers coming up to Jack and going like, "Are you famous?" Uh, and, and and Jack like, "No," because if you don't, yeah. And then and then I'm going, "Yeah, you are." And then they're like, "Like, can I can I get a picture with you?" And Jack going half the time, "Okay," and half the time, "No." <laughs> and uh, but then in either case, they come up later and go like, "King Kong, School of Rock, or whatever." And, like they yell some shit at him. But um, the Cato, like like w w the one time we we were out and like he was singing karaoke and people were just walking up. Putting their arm around him like he was like a statue, <laughs> and going like, Aah! and taking a picture, and then walking away and looking at the phone and going hilarious like five feet away from him, and he's just like playing with the Queen of Hearts. <laughs> uh, I guess I've become a piece of furniture in a cosmic uh, also game he, by God. In an in in a incredibly <laughs> unique situation, he was just a celebrity for being on trial. Uh, also, hilariously, had no idea what he was supposed to do, why he was even called as a witness, and then ended up, black people hated him, black people loved him, white people hated him, white people loved him. Like, there was no, like, he was on every side of every coin. <laughs> and uh, th what's, what's truly tragic about Cato is that he's one of the most likable people you'll ever fucking meet. He, you can't not like Cato Kalin because he's such a sweetheart. And if you ever saw him around children, you'd be like, like he should, like he's. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's, I, it just sounds like it sounds like you're talking about like a terrier or something. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but 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 he, but he he is like a terrier. He has, yeah. he has he has terrier like energy, and he will entertain the world's children all. Day. He just runs around the pool all day long and just like like and, and people are like, oh, can you please just babysit my children for mm -hmm. the, the whole time? Well, now you got us worried again. It's not worrisome. He's not going to do anything bad. Mm. Uh, I know. We're just programmed. When we hear the word children, we, we all think about fucking them. <laughs> so, this is what's happened to us. That's what happened to you. Don't, don't, act like it's, don't act like it's not the case with you. <laughs> hey, you ever, you, ever, you ever not brush your teeth, and then you're like leaving, and then you're like, oh, shit, I didn't brush my teeth, and then you just drink something gross like coffee? Because you're like, well, my breath will be terrible, but then, but someone will think, oh, he drank coffee. <laughs> it's food for thought. <laughs> food for nightmares. <laughs> it's like too far from the toothpaste. So I'm I, like, I, I'll just drink some gross coffee, <laughs> so, and then so they'll blame. I'll just, I'll just double down on being disgusting. <laughs> well, and they won't go. Yeah, because it's somehow worse if you're t if you have bad breath, and then it's like the bad the bad part of your breath is like your entrails, yeah. you know. <laughs> So you just, you just I had a computer teacher in high school who w was awesome. She was so great. But boy, the coffee and cigarette breath combined to make something just... I'm really phobic about it. I, I, that's, a, that's one of many reasons why I don't, I don't make eye contact when I'm talking to people. I try to, like, I try to look at the floor because I just like... You get a blast of bad breath in your face. It's like... You know, and then the other. And also, no one's going to tell you. You don't know if you have. No, bad why would you tell anybody? And that, like, like, every once in a while, happens. I'm on the receiving end of it, and I always think that poor person because 
they don't know why I'm why I just became 10 percent more aloof because it's not like anyone ever goes uh, you know <laughs> you, you just kind of like you smell it and then you just kind of like you know you sort of like you just sort of work your <laughs> you, you sort of pull spiritually back from the whole thing you kind of keep your head in the same place but you just like kind of hate them and like slowly like 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 they just feel you know th- and that person doesn't know sometimes you talk to somebody who is just like like clinically bad breath like they don't they, they could have people could have like halitosis they could have like a bad thing some people have that with their armpits some people have that with their butts um <laughs> There are, there Everybody are. has that with their butts. By the way. Uh, so it's something to think about. Uh, get off your high horse. Hashtag uh, uh, stinking is not a choice. Uh, and uh, I will send $100 to the Red Cross. Okay. Uh, I, was, uh, I, was, I was in Variety. Uh, I was on the cover of Variety with Joel McHale th- uh, this last week. Oh, yeah? And, uh, yeah, little little dream come true. I got to mark this one off my... Uh, my uh, non-hack version of a bucket list. Um, the, uh, was there a hilarious v- variety headline with great abbreviations? Well, it did say, it's, <laughs> I didn't get this for a really long time. It said, it was a picture of me and Joel, and then it says, imperfect harmony. W- w- what's not to get there? Well, I didn't, I was like, cause, well, because the, the I and the M and imperfect were in red, and then the perfect was in white. That's 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 needless. Yeah. Because I well, so it was like, yeah for a long time it was like oh in perfect harmony the se- would be a phrase, like no one really. So they're Im- trying to Im- italicize the im. Yeah, it was like Im- more like imperfect <laughs> harmony and, uh, and like ch- you know building on that old chestnut perfect harmony like it's like okay that's a musical term but like I mean I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. but anyways. The uh, uh, thank you for putting me on your cover. Uh, I have some notes. The uh, <laughs> I'm sure whoever wrote that headline will agree with me that they, that was not their finest hour. The, uh, the, the, the it, it, it sounds like a, 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 a protracted meeting went on about that. I like, just have some 19 year old kid that has to sit in this cubicle and he's like Dan Harmon, Dan, God damn it, Dan. <laughs> Dan, good time. D- don't don't displease the Harmon. Mikhail's Navy Harmon. Mm, oh my God. Irish Irish delight. Um, uh, the, uh, <laughs> just, there's a paragraph in it that says Dan Harmon finishes his breakfast of peanut butter filled pretzels uh, before hopping on his Segway, which he purchased to conserve energy. Dash his own. That's a, that's a good lead, and it's the. <laughs> and it's. The I, I would continue reading that article. <laughs> well, that's, that's not the opener. That's just a. Oh, it's a, like if you if you write. Oh, if, that, that's how you start it. You start with is, that line. This is this is this is the things I have no reason to, I have no I have no right to complain about uh, section, but like like I mean, like if you write, write an article f- about me, here's the start of my complaint. Uh, uh, like it, it would seem that if you don't mention my fat gut, like you get fined by <laughs> some kind of press union or something. Like, like, and it's always like the last two. Like I was in Hollywood Reporter, and it's always those, his visible paunch, his <laughs> his protruding paunch, his pronounced paunch bulges from beneath his sweater as he slovenly <laughs> sucks up a bowl of Skittles, with d- d- downing globs of frog meat. <laughs> Uh, a, 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 a timid slave-clad Leia struggles against her chains as he gurgles his desires in a, f- a language only, only worms could understand. <laughs> and I, I, know, I know the battle of the sexes is over and the men won and we don't have anything to complain about, but man, you just don't see the, that in articles about the female showrunners is like just physical discover her calf muscles could use some work but uh <laughs> like, you know how much hell you'd catch if you... Also, like, they're talking about writers, not actors. Like, I know, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, if we've described Shonda Rhimes in an article about her, do you know how much trouble you would get into? Like, if you're just, like, 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 like clinically scrutinizing her, like, giving a, giving a description of her or any... any like, I think, you know, it, it, that seems a bit harsh, but, like, part of what's for sale if someone's writing an article about you is the fact that you're willfully, like, you, you're just you. Like, like, and part of that is, like, the... 
you know, a glass is of what pop- you see. Yeah, part of right. part of what what's for sale here is what you're yeah. looking at, what you're picking on. And and, the, and that big you've... fat nerd shit. <laughs> The big, the big shitty, thick shit face uh, waddles into the room with shit coming out of his face. What it's going to be another hard day in the writer's room. What do you think would have been different? Let, let's say going back, same behavior, same attitudes towards authority. If I looked like Steve Levitan, what yeah. would be different about the article? It would be no, like no, no, fucking... Go, 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 go. What? Do, do you think you would still have been fired for the same behavior if you were like super sexy? Like if you were like... No. You wouldn't have been fired. Nope. You don't think so? Wouldn't there have been more outrage if you if you if if, if you they wouldn't have noticed it. I would have been, if I if I took a shower every day and was passionate about my show. It would it wouldn't look like I was crazy. It would look like I was, I was awesome. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, I get it. He's like Zucker Zuckerman from college. <laughs> he always he was always into, mad into basketball, man. And he fucking got up every day, took a shower, and got fucking aggro on the court. That's just that's Harmon. He's like the Zuckerbung. Do, 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 <laughs> don't people want to take down really good-looking people too that are in positions? Not of power? the other good-looking people. That's that's all us ugly people because we're looking at them on billboards. You're we're like, I want to take I want to take those first guys of all, down. You're not ugly. You're not an ugly person. Thanks, Jeff. Must have been hard for you to say. <laughs> it was the easiest thing I've said all night. <sighs> Queer. You're good. <laughs> So, anyways, that's I deserve better. That's that's why you get fired. That's why you get fired. <laughs> it's your strange homophobia for no reason. <laughs> it's your rampant homophobia. Don't you want to talk about how to murder people with Spencer? Should we bring Spencer up? Um, are, are you going? Are you going to murder him? No, no. Oh, I want to. Oh, I, you want to find out how to murder somebody else? Yeah, yeah. Like, all right, well, Spencer knows. Crittenden. Yeah, murder talk. Murder talk with Spencer Crittenden. Murder talk. Murder talk. Murder talk with Spencer Crittenden. It's murder talk. It's time to talk how to kill a person. Well, my Crittenden. dice got one side. My dice got two. See? Nope. Nope. No. Well, you sat down, right? I, th- I thought that was... I like to sit and rap. Okay. Yo. I'm a sit-down rapper, and I'm here to say I'm not gonna stand when I rap today. I'm gonna my knees and squat. I'm a lazy rapper. That's all I got. I'm a sitting rapper. And I'm on the can looking through the newspaper as fast as I can. Look at these headlines. Look at the vice president up to his old tricks again. Well, sit down rapper is the worst rapper. <laughs> sit down sit rapper is terrible. Rapper. Remember when you yeah. came in, you were a DMX when yo. you came from outside the alleyway? Yo, yo. No, I don't care what you want. Lazy rapper. Sit down rapper don't care about your needs. Sit down rapper <laughs> doesn't care about your needs. There's no such thing. There's a reason why you don't sit down and rap. We've proven that. Name another sit-down rapper. No, 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 no. I don't do anything for anyone. Sit-down rapper is concerned with the self. Sit-down rapper rhymes self with shelf. Sit-down rapper doesn't give a shit. Sit-down rapper is just living in it. I see a piece of cake. I see a piece of cookie. I fucked your mama so hard, she was a Wookiee. No, no, no. Say, no, no. That's... I had to come to an, uh, an abrupt end. I think we proved that it's it's harder to sit down and rap. It's it's or easier. You know, I, I think you you get more out of your little rap baby dance. Uh, <laughs> there's more energy in the in the little kicky foot baby dance that you do. What do you think, Spencer? I think there's definitely a lot more energy in your kicky foot baby dance. <laughs> Spencer, have you, have you given any thought to getting away with a perfect murder? Oh, I think we all have, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> the way you say that makes me think that you thought about it just a little bit more. Well, I mean, I don't know. I think that... Well, of course, we, you have to fantasize about it, it only for, like, yeah, academic reasons. It's right? like thinking about jumping out of windows. It's not like you're going to jump out of windows. It's just you got to think about it to know you're not going to do it. I went through a whole phase where I, I watched Forensic Files and all those shows for like a million years. I was, I was unemployed and I was on the Atkins diet and I would watch Columbo and Forensic Files and eat summer sausage and cheese and just, and, and just w- watched my bank account going from 12000 to 11000 to 10000 <laughs> There was like this clock that, that had Milwaukee at 12. Like, I thought I was going to move back to Milwaukee, and they'd be like, yay, you were born here so you could wash dishes here? No, that wouldn't have happened. Anyways, th- uh, so I was in denial. I was just watching a lot of forensic files, because I guess, I guess that's what happens when you're in a bad point in your career. You watch intervention and, like, murder shows, because you're like, man, that person's fucked. <laughs> um, 
But what I learned from the forensic files thing is that it basically, if you really want to murder people and just never get caught, you got to have a boat. You got to have a boat. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have a boat that you own and a harbor master that is asleep at the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and maybe I'm sure these days, like the security cameras at the docks, you know, if they see you getting on a boat with someone that doesn't come back, that's probably a big part of it. Now, excuse my burping, but the uh, but yeah, you burped a lot like Bob Durst burped when he uh, when he when he was shown the uh, the handwriting. <laughs> So I'm sure there's a couple people that have to uh, have to catch up, and it's just such a it's, I, you know you don't want to deny them a, a morsel. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, there's a little couple. It's it's those little little people I do this for. <laughs> Wait for the burping. <laughs> yeah. Teaser. Uh, I did, I, have I mentioned before? I was reading a, as a Newsweek, like I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, and uh, and the page like four or six or eight of Newsweeks was always like a bunch of like quotes of the week. And it was a uh, – if, if I'm repeating myself on the podcast, then forgive me, but it was a LAPD homicide detective, and they'd found a body or two buried up in Angela's National Forest that was like an unsolved crime and, or like a cold case or whatever. And a, a reporter asked the detective, this like seasoned, salty old homicide detective, he said, do you think there's a lot of bodies buried up here? And he said, please, if I asked every dead body out here to stand up, it would look like Venice Beach. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this is where you go bury people. And it, 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 w- one of the dead bodies would have a turban and roller skates. <laughs> <laughs> one of them would be spray painted okay. silver. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> one guy would have a sandcastle with a, a naked lady. <laughs> the rest of them would be drawing the other half of, of them. Uh, 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 Spencer, would you? Would you? Would you? Uh, okay, so if you killed someone on accident. Uh huh. Well, I just, we're, 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 I'm, I'm going to assume if any of us killed someone on accident, we would we wouldn't try to get away with it. We would we would turn ourselves in. It was an accident. Describe yeah. the accident, like 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 a crime of passion, or you you accidentally. That's not an accident, right? I mean, like like you got angry and pushed somebody, and they fell over, hit their head on a table, and cut themselves open and bled to death. The accident, or like you hit them with a car by accident, like like you didn't see them, and like like. Well, I guess either of those cases. I'm, I want to no, get. I want to. I want to know. I want to get us to a place where. We killed somebody, and we want to try to get away Dan, with it. Dan, this is conspiracy you're talking about. <laughs> we want, want to all talk about well, killing somebody. <laughs> Let's pick a specific person. <laughs> no, I mean, because, because obviously I mean, you, you, you kind of bounce off of the thing. I mean, we, if, 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 I were, if I were somehow you know, indirectly like, responsible for someone's death, I would, I would immediately go – I would think to myself, well, one thing's for sure, doing anything other than the honest, uh, confessional, like immediate turn myself in thing is just going to get me in trouble. I'm going to be uh, – uh, but I wa- I'm trying to think of like if I'm really in a, in, a, in, a, in a place where I'm like, fuck, man, i I got to get away with this murder. If I crossed a line I, – I know for me because you watch these things, uh, you watch these shows, and you watch people in interrogation rooms. I think you have to be a certain kind of crazy to get away with lying uh, about it. Uh, you have to be so cold in some way that I don't think I could actually get away with uh, dissembling about it. I think that I would have to turn myself in because I would never, ever get away with lying. And I'm a professional liar. I'm an actor. That's all we do for a living. I, I, I don't think I could pull it off. I would never be able to. Like All that stuff, like the, the time and date stuff, like all the cops ask you, where were you then and where were you now? And all that stuff. I can't even get that stuff straight like in reality. <laughs> so I know if I killed somebody, then I'd have to create this timeline. Well, see, that's, that's the mistake, I think, right there. You don't do that. Uh, if your story's down pat, I think the regular human being doesn't know what they had for dinner last night and doesn't know where they were. Yeah, but but you have to forget that you killed somebody. You have to like leave that out of your like natural patter. Uh, so there has to be this like big block of like not knowing a bunch of stuff. Right. So you have to fabricate stuff to fill that. Okay, so you don't have a boat. You, you drive a Prius. You, you, it's hard to get somebody into the, the middle back of, of the Prius. city. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm, how, I'm, how do how do you? Yeah. Spencer, I mean, I'm, I'm, Spencer, you seem to have given us some some. Uh, some idle thoughts. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it, well, it all all depends, right? I mean, what are you? Is it a crime of passion? Are you are you planning this? Do you have like a, a Rube Goldberg set up in your study? Or? <laughs> well, can we just say? Why, why, I mean, don't, you, why, we why can... don't you pick one? You, like, let's say it's second degree. It's not first degree. It's a second degree homicide. Well, you've got to go. Uh, you know, you just the old. No, I read about recently. You could cook down a pack of cigarettes into a into a nicotine paste. Put it on a doorknob, and uh, people touch it. Nicotine goes into their bodies and kills them. What? We do try one of those, maybe. I don't know. It was in a. 
It was in an old, uh, you know, military handbook, supposedly. Uh, Kill someone I've with a pack of, of cigarettes. I've heard of like on forensic files or datelines of, of people trying to nicotine poison people. I never heard the door knock. They probably read it's that so, thing. It's so volatile that you can touch it and it goes through your skin and yeah. that much nicotine does you in? Yeah, well, I mean, it's a lot of nicotine. I mean, if you took all of the nicotine in a pack of cigarettes at once, you'd be, you'd be in bad shape. It's like uh, thank you for smoking, you know, that quality comedy. I'm, 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 I'm asking about, like, just take my word for it. You're in a situation where there's a body on the floor of your home, and you you turning yourself in. You you've decided is not an option. Well, I'd hope there's no blood everywhere. Well, I mean, I'll let's, I'll, let's, I'll, 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 leave, I'll leave. Let's the, say there's no blood spatter. But, the, but, there, say, but there is a 200 pound you human just, being. You got to Breaking Bad that shit, you know, with uh, <laughs> the the plastic tub and the acid. You could get fucking acid, man. You could get acid at Home Depot. But then there's purchase. There's, there, there's records. That there's cameras of you, you in Home Depot buying that shit. You know, you find a hobo. <laughs> Ho- hobos talk, Spencer. Hobos don't talk to nobody. Unless you. <laughs> well, hobos talk, but if you watch Empire, hobos only talk in cryptic, like uh, Egyptian riddles. <laughs> They're like threshold guardians for police. No, but okay. The one-eyed Jack uh, crows at midnight. <laughs> Well, it, uh, it, that's why it depends. I mean, I'd hope if you were going to murder someone, you put in the due diligence to, you know, go cruising around parking lots until you find parking lot without security cameras, and then you cruise around and find a Home Depot without cameras, and then you go in and you use cash only to buy muriatic acid. You know, I mean, we're talking about getting away with murder here. It's not just, oh, I killed someone. Let me go find out the nearest Home Depot. It's, no, but now, it's we're talk- a- now we're talking about first degree. You thought about this before you killed the person. We're talking about, oh, shit, I got a dead body. I, I haven't scouted out every uh, cameraless Home Depot. Well, it's a well, bad which- move to just randomly kill someone. Well, I don't, you guys are going back and forth, though. I, uh, we, we finally got him to start talking about how to get rid of the okay, body. Okay, Let's okay. not distract okay, him. So with murder, the, 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 body, the, on the, body on the on I want to know how to find a Home Depot depot with no security cameras this is where we start okay. to get into lawsuit territory right. it's all for educational purposes any anyone acting on this is not doing anything we condone okay that's out of the way <laughs> i mean how you wouldn't be able to know there's security cameras everywhere there's everywhere, Just you, everywhere you know period. you say that but when we were in texas i was finding awfully lots of areas with no security cameras so i think it's doable not I mean, maybe maybe not in Citiesburg, where, where Los you, Angeles. Where are you going to go get Where are you going to go get muriatic acid without a camera pointed right at your face ten times? I mean, a lot of places. I don't know. Uh, Ace Hardware on High Street, for instance. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you, you're going to go acid in the tub? There's di- yeah. I mean, there's different ways to do it. I mean, well. Maybe ask in the tub, or you do the little like what the Mexican warlords are doing, where you just burn them in like gas in an oil drum, you know, something like that. Right. It's fucking cold, man. They're well, gonna... you got to get away with it. That's the whole point. If you're not going to do it, just go to the police. Don't just you think save everyone gonna, some like, trouble? Like we always talk. We're we worried about handguns. We're worried about nuclear power. We're worried about the uh, environment. We're worried about all these things that we think are ticking down to midnight. Well, well relatively, like. It's, at some point, someone might invent just like a like disintegration ray, <laughs> like that you can just point at shit and make it disappear. Like, don't you think that the, the entire justice system is based on the fundamental unspoken assumption that it's that you have to do certain things to cover up a crime? Mm-hmm. And if, what if, if people st- start to figure out like something gets invented that's like, oh, this. This handy dandy little doozy doodle, like it, 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 it disintegrates matter. It turns it back back into atoms, and they, and, and we're like, yay, garbage is gonna go away. But then meanwhile, it's like, um, yay, habeas corpus is uh, impossible. If you can trace a firearm, <laughs> you should be able to trace the disintegration ray w- w- way better. Yeah, like, you need be. some heavy bureaucracy if you had a. I mean, even if there I, wasn't, I don't know, would... man. I don't know if the founding fathers would have wanted that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that. <laughs> I it's, mean, we can't even clone, clear. we can't even clone people though. Like, if a disintegration ray shows up, I mean, you can believe there's going to be some moratoriums or something. Yeah, no, I mean, we're going to be alarmed about it, but I'm saying it's going to be a catastrophic thing. Like, we've had firearms, which are basically just a, they're just like a a screwdriver that can, you know, throw baby screwdrivers at something. It's like, 
it, it's just a tool. It just it happens to be a very dangerous tool. Like like, it, 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 like it's designed to like put holes in people, which tends to kill them. And and that's a big deal. And that's been around for three hundred or more years. And we're still trying to figure it out. But like there was a day when that shit got invented. No. Th- uh, I take that back. There wasn't a day when that shit got invented, and it was back when we were pretty barbaric as a people anyway. Like, your t- the first guns were just, like, f- extra fast arrows. Um, <laughs> like, why deal with the length of an arrow when you can shorten it down to an arrowlet? Um, uh, now with smoke. Um, the, 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 but, 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 like, next Wednesday, someone at MIT could go, hey, I invented a wand that you tap tap your dog with and it disappears. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> it probably requires more uh, uh, difficulty I than I'm thinking. I think the science, like the conservation of energy and stuff like that, like, like it would be hard to just eliminate something well, completely. Yeah. I mean, don't worry about that. That's not really Spencer, ethics. that's all I worry about. <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, uh, I, I got to uh, meet and, and be on stage with uh, Professor Brian Cox, the infinite monkey cage, you know, the, the English um, uh, physicist from CERN, from the, the Large Hadron Collider. And we were talking, and uh, I was telling him my ghost stories and my 9-11 dream, you know. <laughs> and he proved that neither uh, that ghosts can't exist uh, because of the second law of thermodynamics. And that... <laughs> Which is no ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> More or less. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, uh, that my dream, my... my my one and only panic attack on the, at the exact moment that uh, the, the second plane hit the uh, the building was simply a non-zero sum coincidence. It was just simply like he goes, uh, you, "How many dreams do you have a night? How many do you remember?" I said, Lo- "Loads." And he goes, "It's statistically I- inevitable that they resemble things that happen because uh-huh. it's, it's, it's a number larger than zero. It's never a zero. Right and uh, in a way that made me feel like it was kind of liberating. And then he also talked about, I was like, what do you think about the end of the universe? And he said, it's just going to cool off, and it's just going to hit a uniform, cool temperature, and then that will be that. So there's a million versions of us. There's infinite versions of us, but there's only one version of this. There's only one version of what we're hap- what's happening right now. And we get one shot at it, and when it's over, that's the end of it. And I thought that's, that's kind of... Lovable. It's going like to cool that. off into what? Into into a into a into a, into a cool room Don't. temperature. Of, of, of a <laughs> like a, uh, s- space will have a, a, have a have a very low cold temperature, and that will be that. There, uh, even black holes will die. Everything will die. I'm not going to die. <laughs> you, 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 your scientist friend forgot about one thing: the power of rock and roll. <laughs> rock and roll. Yeah. Rock and roll is here to stay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was so fucking rock, man. Yeah. That yeah. was so rock. It was rap. <laughs> you can't. You can't cool that that off. It doesn't matter how how much entropy there is in the universe. That's that's something my gut tells me. Which speaks louder than a lot of voices. Just, just, just ask the press. His prodigious fucking fat inner tube of a gut ripples as he explains that <laughs> he's the victim of... You, but you, you, you don't have the rippling kind of gut. You have that kind of ex-football coach, very firm... <laughs> That kind of like, like it, it used would, to be muscle. It would sound like a watermelon. <laughs> like, g- give me a thump on Mike. Like, give me a, like, put it on Mike. Because it, it's not, it's not a jiggler. It's, it's a thumper, right? It looks like a thumper. Yeah, yeah it's nice. <laughs> it doesn't jiggle. It, it just resonates like a tom tom. Mm. <laughs> like a sea otter. Like it's for, it's for breaking open clams. <laughs> As I swim on my back. <laughs> I don't like to go into the pool, but when I do, I like to st- I like to float on my back, and then my my belly is just like above water. It gets red, you know. If I don't are are you very buoyant when you're in the pool? Are, are, are you super buoyant? Cause I, I, I my like up my torso is buoyant, my legs sink. I can never do the full float thing. Yeah, well, my legs kind of you know they they bend at the knees down underneath me, but this baby, it's like a you know, it's like a, a you know. Dirigible. How many? How many? I was c- trying to think of how many uh, cement masonry blocks do you think I would have to tie to you to get you to sink <laughs> <laughs> when I drop you off of uh, just off of Catalina Island? Yeah, just one. Oh no, it's, it's more than that, baby. It's more than that. 
Um, you're, you're, a, you're a five blocker all the way. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me make sure I didn't put anything else in my in my pad. Uh, one more week. I got one more week of this this craziness. I should be obviously working right now, but I made a commitment a long time ago to keep doing this show, even if it <laughs> ruins community. But <laughs> we're sh- supposed to be shooting the finale tomorrow. There's no script. But luckily, I'm. I'm <laughs> I, I'm so far behind schedule that they do have a bunch of stuff they need to still shoot on the last episode. So I'm like, well, tomorrow, like, Shrab was tweeting at me. He is started up. Is he directing the, it? Yeah. So he's, sh- he's shrabbing out. He tweeted at me. Are you ah, being... when's my ep- what's my episode about? Like on Twitter to, like, call me out. That, that's not shrabbing. That's just a worried director. <laughs> take, take, that's a, take that's, that that's shit a to professional Twitter, though. thing. Uh, uh, what am I shooting tomorrow morning? He's if trying. you delivered the script and then he was like, but what am I shooting tomorrow? That'd be shrabbing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the show called? <laughs> uh, has there been an episode th- uh, so far that was delivered on time yet? Like, uh, haven't you always been kind of under the... Gun? Yeah, no, not in terms of, like, the... No, no. I mean, the, in terms of giving it to Yahoo so they can put it online, yeah, they've, they've all been on time. But not, like, a, a table reads and... No, uh, first yeah, day nothing, nothing has been on time since the beginning. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. We started behind schedule. Like, I... We started on schedule, and then we did a table read of the first episode, and everyone was like, yeah, that's great. Here's our here's our nine notes, and it was, like, pretty pretty... Pretty heavy duty notes because it was like kind of, and I looked at the episode and was like, "This is a piece of shit." That's why everyone has all these notes and this is garbage. Like, and, and I only spent the next three weeks, which are supposed to be spent doing the next three episodes, like rewriting the the first episode. I really liked that episode. That was great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and then you're just behind schedule forever. You're just behind schedule forever. What, what was the whole order? How many episodes? Thirteen. And so you're. On the home stretch, yeah. One more was tomorrow is the first of the last five days. And so you made of a, shooting. You made an agreement with yourself that you would do what in a week? Just be done. You would have it written. No, he made an no, agreement no. that he'd l- let Harmontown ruin community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I wasn't gonna like cancel <laughs> shows at Meltdown because I'm gonna write. And it's like, yeah, that's gonna be the case every week or you know, like whatever. Yeah, this is this is two and a half hours out of here. Yeah, exactly. You could you could spend this researching like. Uh, How much Minecraft have you played this week? How many hours of Minecraft? I pack it in like where I can, you know, and I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I, I, I don't know, like half hour, t- five hours. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. Ballpark it. Ballpark it. I can't ballpark it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, you just can't say because Yahoo is listening right now. No, it's not. I don't play it instead of working. I play it whenever I possibly can. So I have no idea what that what that number is. <laughs> like I, I I work whenever I, you possibly couldn't be working. Wh- what? <laughs> like like. Yeah, it was like you, you're saying that you're, you're, t- you're using some sort of free time when you yes. can't be working. Yes, yes. Right. So if I, s- I send pages down to the set, and I'm like, okay, they, it's going to take them like three hours to shoot that. So then I'm like, yeah, Minecraft. <laughs> and then they're like, they're going to need, they're almost done shooting. They're going to, what happens in the next scene? And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Annie, <laughs> Annie kisses Abbott. That'll keep them going. <laughs> Minecraft. <laughs> Your show's like Tootsie. You're just writing it as yeah. a Yeah, it's great. But it's it's turning out fine. That's great. Tootsie's a good movie? No. <laughs> 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 Tootsie's a good movie. Tootsie's a movie. It's one crazy hospital. Um, you know, it's not, it's not, it's, 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 it's too hard and to, painful to explain. I, I, how, how are you holding up physically and mentally? Look at me. Uh... <laughs> Mentally, I'm fine. Uh, we're, How would we're variety describe your physical state? Right? Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's it's one more week. You know, it was really nice. People liked the first two episodes. They uh, they tweeted nice things, so that, that that lifted me up and made me extra nervous about the rest of them. And like, I just uh, you know, it could, we could we could we could pull we could pull through. There's a couple there's a couple in the middle, but but then again, I thought this about the first two, so I, I was like, <laughs> like, there's still a couple in the middle. And I'm like. Let's not pat ourselves on the back just yet, because I don't remember what was going on. Like there was like something about like there's some episodes that are just like there's a fade in on a chicken, and that like <laughs> it, it, like it gets it gets there's some there's some shit <laughs> that happened in the middle where I was trying to catch up by going like okay just go, like like the line producer's like yeah but what do they shoot tomorrow? I'm like look, just calm down, get me a bull whip and a chicken. <laughs> Try to like bluff him and act like I have a plan. Like, like I, I, all I need is Annie and a bullwhip and a chicken and a room painted blue. You act like it's a big deal, but it's not. 
<laughs> That's very showbiz, man. I love yeah. that. <laughs> it should be pretty good. If it's not, you know, fire me. <laughs> Are you going to follow through with that? that? <laughs> oh, shit. Camera takes. <laughs> Dan Harmon dares Yahoo to fire him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. You gonna fo- that, that woman that we met with the, uh, the, the spinal deterioration in Austin, are, are, you, gonna fo- are you gonna put her in there? With I have the, uh, Annie's, Annie, I've put Annie in touch with the wardrobe department. Is and, that right? Uh, yeah. So oh, you, the, you, you put her physically in touch with them? Like, like, yeah. Uh, tw- Twitterly in touch. That, that's great. The, the wardrobe supervisor has a, has a Twitter account, and I, I hooked him up on there, and then I explained to the department the situation, <laughs> which is that <laughs> Annie has to be dressed a certain way for the finale. So. And they were okay with that? Yeah, they don't. They don't care. I love it. They don't care about the show. What's, it, what, what's the uh, what's the <laughs> bullwhip chicken episode about? Can, we, can you can you spoil the bullwhip chicken scene for us? No, it's a, that was I was using I know you, I know, because if I, I said the real things, it'd be like really like I I, I I I can't I can't say the real things. Oh, so those are placeholders for actual actual things that you made up just as placeholders. Well, kind of yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you're like an improvisation. Uh, improvisationist, except you're not supposed to be. Yeah, I'm not supposed to be making things up. And then every, <laughs> and the thing that kills me is that everyone underneath me who's like, well, if you would give me a script with two days' notice, I'd be able to make the best chicken for you. <laughs> or the best bullwhip. But then you, they get it an hour before we shoot, and they're like, okay, I guess I'll have my cousin run out and buy a shitty bullwhip on Hollywood Boulevard. Like, like, like you know, like they're, they, I make them look bad. That's why I'm fired. Fire, fire myself. You. There's nobody left to fire me. Harmon, you're fired. Did you feel like you owe it to us, or as, as a, just as a story structure person, to get fired a third time off a show? Yeah, <laughs> but it, it should be me. That's the that's the third act. I fire myself. <laughs> Harmon, you're fired. I'm fired. I quit. No, you're fired. <laughs> Turns out that's the same thing. Yeah, Fi- firing yourself is quitting. By the way. <laughs> Because we need somebody's got to be responsible, you know. And I've I've come to terms with the fact that I'm t- I'm I'm just too talented to do anything. <laughs> do you foresee in the future like you working for a big like ma- like major network and na- no. ma- ma- major corporation again? Or is that I foresee myself under a bridge eating Aaron's leg. <laughs> <laughs> because I tricked her into into killing the weakest dog while I came up behind her. With a bowling pin, and we're in Philadelphia or somewhere where he read in the paper has no taxes, and we're like, I'm like picking crystal meth out of my beard, and we're making videos about fucking Ruf- Rupert Murdoch. And I, 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 if you want, if you want, if you want to know how I picture my future, follow uh, Evie, Evie uh, Quaid on, on Twitter. How, how many followers are they up to? Evie oh, Quaid I mean, and Randy it's got to be less than 400. That's amazing to me. Like, no one else is interested in this. It really is. I mean, I posted a link. I posted a link on the Twitter, and I was like, "This is the most important thing in the world right now." But this is Randy Quaid and his wife, right? Yeah, yeah they're yeah. fucking. They're fucking, and the dog's going off. It's it's pretty great. They continue to issue communiques and things like that. They're trapped in Canada. Hillary Clinton took their passport. Uh, they're uh, they're they're they're. De- what do you call it? They're not expatriates. They're they're depatriates or something. They're, they're fugitives. <laughs> fugitives. <laughs> <laughs> They've uh, yeah. They can't get back into America, and they're just they're sitting there. I, I, you him. know, it really, it's a, it's a story that makes you. <laughs> Are they incredibly it, in love? Is this like a, the greatest I, I, love story in the world? They better be. Yeah. It's like, like true romance. I feel like they do have like a very healthy relationship as as relationships go. I don't. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if making YouTube videos of s- having sex with your wife wearing a mask of Rupert Murdoch is necessarily a healthy relationship <laughs> practice. Maybe Unless you're both smiling while you're doing it. Like they're, they're they're not like he's not he's not like you're wearing it wrong, and she's not like you're fucking me wrong. She like like they're both like on the same page. Like that's hard. <laughs> I'll take that over anything. Do you think if, you, if, you, if you're wearing a mask while you're fucking, do you think you're smiling while you're wearing that? Or do you, or like, do you let, let the mask do the talking? Because like when I worked at Disneyland, uh, I, t- I, would, 
I, I asked all the Goofies, all the Mickeys, all the Minis, all the Chips and Dales. I asked them like, like when you like people smile, are you smiling for a picture? Like, are you smiling behind the mask? Like, no, you do that for the first couple days. <laughs> it takes when, days. When you hear smile, we we smile, and they realize at the end of the day, your face hurts, you're tired, and you're hot, and you're sweaty, and they keep the kids keep kicking you in the nuts, and there's nothing to smile about. And after a while, this will not work for the uh, for the podcast, but on camera. Uh, you ask any goofy if you ever meet anybody that's a that's a costume character at a major theme park, ask them what they look like when they're taking photos, and it's this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's super, super joyless and sad. So I, I I would like to think that she is smiling while wearing the Rupert Murdoch mask. Also, why is there a Rupert Murdoch mask? Because my first question. No, you gotta don't. watch they, this movie, man. They 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 made it clearly out of a, some magazine, and uh, oh, it's not like they didn't get like a nice latex. Like, I think no. they printed it. Oh, off so the it's internet. Like a, it's a piece of paper with the eyes cut out. Yeah. Okay. There's it's a lot really of stuff creepy. about it that if you want to let it will make you very sad. However, <laughs> as a person who's going to couples therapy and like is in love with his wife and wanting and, and learning like how how you know the delicate art of of like making a relationship work between two people, like these guys have been been, you know, they've been they've been a, a healthy couple for like 20, this 20 word years. healthy. I don't. I don't think it follows. I mean, just because they aren't mad at each other doesn't make it a healthy relationship. It's just. Well, that's true. But Bonnie and Clyde had fights between bank robberies, but their bank robbery didn't make them uh, unhealthy. If Bonnie and Clyde robbed your bank as they were leaving, <laughs> you I, lost that. I, guy. I'm with you, madam or sir, or whoever that was. If Bonnie and Clyde robbed I your bank... I think the bank robbery is the first sign of unhealthiness. And <laughs> yeah, that's what, what I'm you, How can we not make this differentiation here? So the, the, if, a couple, if a couple murders your dog, and they're both like, like sweetie, get, uh, get the tail. And, the, it's and he's like, oh, you're something like... <laughs> it's not healthy. But you, and then the cops go, like, could you describe the couple that murdered your dog? I'd be like, well, they were very healthy. <laughs> Like they they got along, they were on the same team. Like yeah. it was. Uh, Some say they got along so well that they murdered my dog. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. And, and and I would want the cops to catch this couple. I'd be like, I hope you give them the electric chair. And 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 because but and because I want you to catch them, I want you to take this unique descriptor with you, so you recognize them at Grand Central Station. They they get along great. <laughs> They're very much in love. <laughs> don't 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 bother your, uh, wasting healthy, your time. Wouldn't with the, the healthy spouse uh, deter the other the other one from? Killing a dog and robbing a so. bank. Would, would I, it, I don't know. I think wouldn't you want the, your uh, as as a healthy uh, spouse or, or or you know significant other? You would want the person to not do things that would land you in jail. Well, what, well so if Copernicus's wife had been like, why don't you stop redesigning the solar system? <laughs> oh, because that, is that a healthy is that a healthy relationship? Uh, You're equating redesigning the solar system with killing your dog. Yes, I am. And here, oh, and here's the other thing about cutting up, people, cutting up bodies and all this stuff. Uh, uh, oh, again, good. I hate to beat a dead horse, but uh, uh, like, like, or or or, or take the horse and then like, yeah. The, <laughs> but again, there's people in the courtroom. They go like, and then you know what he did? He took a saw and he cut the arm off, and then he cut the body up, and he took the liver and he put it in a bag. And I'm like, sounds like a doctor. I've been saying this for years. These people need to be watched. Well, you're saying that the suspect is not a doctor, that doctors are all suspects because they know how to cut I'm saying, out. as I've said before, the difference between a doctor and a serial killer is a support Cars. system. <laughs> it's just money. That's it. But doctors don't cut up a live... Or they don't kill a Yes, person. they do. They totally kill, cut up live no, people. They, they don't I caught them. I got them. They don't... <laughs> A doctor doesn't go to Home Depot and buy a bow saw. They don't have to. They're, they're supported. They're licensed. Uh, the, the guy, the murderer, wouldn't have done it if he had a government. That's what the cops are like. I can't believe he did that. I'm like, man, what would you do if you weren't a cop and you had to get rid of a body? Like, a cop can just dump him off on the curb and call his cop friend. <laughs> yeah, I, got, I got another one. I'm Southern because I'm a cop. <laughs> that's, a, that's my cop I, character. I, I, I wasn't going to weigh in exactly where your lawyer character was from. <laughs> Uh, I'm just saying, little like, Jewish, uh, little Jewish. You know, uh, wait, who was Jewish? The lawyer was Jewish. Was a little bit. Wait, your, your lawyer character, a little. Oh, uh, little Jewish. And he took the he took the arm and he thought, okay, all right. No. <laughs> this is a this is a reason to do things to people. <laughs> this is okay. a way to treat a mother. All right, I'll cop to that. Okay, I, 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 
I let I let the magma of pre-existing anti-Semitism, it, of which we are all a part. Uh, you're more guilty than I am in that sense, and it seeped up into my lawyer, my improvised lawyer character. He was a little Jewish, a little stereotypical. You went a little Jewish. Lucas on that one. You uh, went a little a little George Lucas. Uh, on the, my planet, uh, there is much honor and noodles and uh, no silverware. Uh, can you figure out uh, uh, what I'm talking about? Uh, oh, we are much a dis. 11 <laughs> Did we come to a consensus on what we do? We made the wish. No, the, the wish thing was stupid, right? 9/11 song. song. It's a song. It's a song. So far, so good with the 9/11 song. Did you oh, hear yeah. that Trent Reznor one I did? In oh, the oh boy. Let's do uh, let's do a 9/11 song and let's let's try this one. <laughs> Is, 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 this, is this too on the nose? <laughs> Should I go a little weirder with it? Sounds, that sounds like an actual yeah, 9-11 song. Like, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> oh, it's one of those that's not good. dirge type songs. Yeah. Hardy har har. All right. All right. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two towers, one heart, one mind. Without the country, what do you find? The desire to have the towers stay up. But on 9 11, that hope gave up. Why'd you gotta come at us like that? Yo. Terrorism ain't no good. I just try to do mine, I try to do me and mine to the break of time. I got the up the doodle, the, the diggle, the, the dong. I the, fucked your mama on the front lawn. I look up in the air, I see the nation's under attack. Yo, you gotta take that back with just 250 million people trying to cool it out. You gotta get the hell out. Al Qaeda. Mmm, a shamer. Good enough. Thank you. <laughs> this guy's really good. Thank you. I don't care what you think. Thank you. <laughs> I've always had your back. I know. He's a good person. No. 9-11. Don't do it again. It's not that funny. <laughs> I'm oh, to feel bad. I, I want to know more about this this uh, this R&B singer guy. <laughs> oh baby, coming on strong. My name is Alexander. <laughs> Do Flicky. Alexander Do Flicky and I used to go to college back in '99. We were on the same team. Rowing, right? Rowing, yeah. Used to row down the river. Beat those Harvard boats. We beat Stanford, too. Was Stanford there? I think they're in California. I don't know. We were so far ahead, all I knew was I row. I kept rowing and I kept them all rowing. Put your paddles in the water, go fast as you know, and going past the bell tower. Oh, S song ran out. <laughs> Sorry, that's good. That's good. All right. Thank you. So, you met Alexander Duflicky in the rowing team. Uh, <laughs> And that, was, that a, was that an instant friendship, or did you guys like, did you, were you guys friends from the there beginning? There was a lot of contention at first because, really? of course, like just like best friends. Did you ever see Monsters Inc. too? The way that they met, like they weren't they were not good friends to begin with. Right. You know, you, you, that's that that's the way you are in the post quill. Right. You, you you know, you better believe. In the you you reunited with Alexander Duf Duflicky. Was he like a successful R and B singer, or did they, or did you kind of rescue him from? No, we obscurity? actually neither of us were uh, neither of us were even hooked into the R and B scene. You know what I'm saying? It's um, <laughs> but it's like uh, my passion for rowing, like as it as it started to stop equating with a, you know, a, a, a ability to outrow people physically, 
what we noticed is that Alexander's ability to call me forward, bring the best out of me spiritually, psychically, like it lent itself more to the hip hop scene than to rowing, where we were losing like consistently. <laughs> Like, and uh, if you listen to my lyrics, what you'll find in my heart is I'm not that good a rapper, but I'm a better rapper than I was at rowing a boat. <laughs> and Alexander has always been good at telling me what to do and, and that I'm doing good. Was he the He's one an encourager. The, what's it called? The, the coxswain or the boats? The boats and who's, who's the one that the coxswain? Uh, the guy that, was he the coxswain? The one that yelled out? Yeah, he was the coxswain, yeah. yeah. They call him the Coxwing? Swain. Swain? Swain, I believe, right? Coxswain. Coxswain. Coxon. Coxon? Coxon. It's spelled Coxon, but it's Coxon. 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 Like boat swain is bosun. A, a gun a gunsel is a gunnel or whatever, you know. They shorten things. It's not a bunch of rich people shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that you wouldn't know all this. Uh, Rowing terminology. I was a scholarship student personally. I, I was there, um, you know, trying to do my best, turn my family what was, around. What was the school again? I'm sorry. Right. This was University of Georgia, Hollenbrook. What was your major again? Notre. You majored in Notre Dame? Yeah. Because yeah. they have a pretty famous Notre Dame study school there at the, uh, the University of Georgia. It's, it's, you learn all about it. And, you know, I couldn't get into Notre Dame originally, and then this program came up and said you could get a scholarship. My family, like, none of them ever went to school, so like the pressure was on. I had to do right, represent my family, you know, the way we had dealt with in the street. Um, had to turn it around, did and so I went there. Did you graduate knowing a lot about Notre Dame? Uh, I will. I dropped out eventually. The studies were more difficult than rapping and um, <laughs> and and rowing. Like who's spending most? I was spending most of my time rowing, and they asked me not to. To, to to study more about Notre Dame, but I was also then I was very focused on rowing, and I said, "Please let me focus on this." And they said, "Okay, but you have to be good at it." And I was like, "Okay." And then I started to get more interested in rapping, because the rowing was not working out. Was like, there a big falling out with rowing. you and Alexander at some point? Like, <laughs> oh, well, you know we. Uh... Oh, <laughs> Alexander Duflicky, I didn't realize that you were here with us. Every friendship has its ups and downs. Yeah, but you know, you know, we do, we do all right. Um, it's one time we went through a phase where we were living together in the same apartment, one bedroom. We only had two plates for the macaroni. Uh, he would leave his out. He'd leave his macaroni plate out on the coffee table. Yeah, but you would too. Yeah, but two times two don't make up for what you do. Uh, that's true. You guys yeah. do seem to compliment each other pretty well. Yeah, well, you, you get through something like that, and it's like you, you, you're you good. It seems like a pretty healthy relationship that you guys yeah, have. Yeah, well, st you, you got married. Oh, right? that was my salvation. It's about me, my better half. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want this to ever stop. <laughs> this is, we have the worst podcast. <laughs> it's... Why are you here? Why are there nine cameras? Why are people allowed to spend money and buy no, us a subscription? It is terrible. It's <laughs> awful. Uh, I, I, it's so it's so irresponsible. It's uh, yeah, yeah. Or is it the mo Is it so responsible that I don't, it I don't seems wanna, irresponsible? I don't want to be on another one. Fuck other <laughs> yeah. podcasts. I just yeah. keep thinking. I keep watching it through Lance Bang's eyes because he's here tonight and he's <laughs> brought his kids and he's. He's he's funny and smart and, and interesting and like li li lives in Portland and stuff and uh, I don't think he, he I, I can't imagine him enjoying this <laughs> but I'm not fishing for he probably left a long time ago after I <laughs> after I talked about who is this? I'm sorry I don't know who you're talking about he's just a he's a friend of ours he's he's kind of I would call him comedy royalty he's a, he's a comedy director guy he's like he's done a lot of a music video uh, work like a lot of fantastic all the all the people who you would be Lance, not, are you here? Cool still? Did Lance to, leave? Uh, is, he, is he around? He's pr he's probably shy. Also, if, even if he was here, do you, you don't want to ever come up, do you? And just chat for a second. No, the show's better without. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's he's more of a he's he's a he's an older soul yeah, than me. I think discretion is the better part of valor. I think what he's just proving. Yeah, he's just, he's he's with his kids out in the comic book store explaining to them like what why dismemberment is is not funny. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, we know why it's not funny. We were in the same show you were. <laughs> 
yeah, that that point was made very clear. Uh, he has a his his he has wonderful kids. He has a very healthy relationship with him. a little brunch with them in Portland. So he's out killing dogs and robbing banks. <laughs> it's one of those one of those dads. Their their family is one of those families that makes you want to have kids right away because it's like oh they're perfectly cool and they're honest with their kids and they don't you know nobody's like it's not like the you know that weird toxin that's like and it's not like it's not like those spoiled L A parents you see where it's like the parent is the best friend of the kid and it's like it's not that either it's just you know, when you when you when you witness like transparency in a family it's always like kind of inspiring and like i could do this i could try this that's where the word parent comes from parent pre- from transparency yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's latin look it up <laughs> So, all right. So, Spencer. Hey. Um, oh, oh, God. Speaking of <laughs> w- horrible things. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'll take it from here, I guess. <laughs> Is there any? What's burning your craw? Come on, t- uh, t- uh, give 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 us Spencer's. Uh, oh. uh, 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 yeah, Spencer. What's what's uh, what's burning your boots lately? What's um, chapping your hide? Uh, I can't. What's a, what's, a, what's a bee in your bonnet? A pee in your <laughs> blanket? <laughs> A bat in my belfry. Thank you. Yeah, do you do you have a a bugbear that's currently uh, haunting you right now? <laughs> no. Um. Well, okay. Yeah, I listen. So I listen to NPR. I think it's great. I think everyone should listen to NPR. But uh, sometimes you listen to these stories and they try and put too cute of a button on the end of their stories. Like, and it's I can't I I can't think of any good examples. Like, um, I don't know. Like, there'd be a story about, like, a, a, a goose who lost his sight, and then they'd end the story with, like, or, no, it was about a goose, and then they, like, restored its sight because, like, chemicals got thrown on it. I don't know. But then they'd be like, but for one goose in Portland, he will have a gander. I knew that. I saw that. I'm Nancy there. Klein, yeah. NPR News. And it's, like, so many. They're trying so hard. Yeah. I it, can't that, think of any good that ones. Was pre- that was pretty hard to avoid. I mean, like, if you... <laughs> If you're writing that story, you don't do the goose without the gander. Thing. You, you have to. You guys ever listen to NPR and then they're like, "Like, okay, that's that's NPR. Thanks for all your thanks for your, your money and it's public and 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 stuff. And we'll be right back after a word from these strangers, the John Q and James L. Yeah, Knight Foundation. Well, uh, don't forget. But sometimes it's just out and out like, uh, but they just make it sound NPR-ish. But it's like getting really close yeah. to just like. Radio Lab is made possible by a sum of money by the Colgate toothpaste uh, people. Yeah. Colgate toothpaste is an interesting new way of brushing your teeth. And they're, they're, they're like, this is a commercial for a thing. It's true. It's uh, you know, the public radio have failed in America. They had to, they had to, you know, cave to public or er, to corporate interests. They shouldn't even. There should be a. There should, there, for a very small portion of what we call a lot of, of 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 collective revenue, you could keep a lot of cool shit going. That's my feeling about that. In Britain, you know, the government pays for like all that shit. They have crazy awesome radio stations out there. Yeah, like there will all their sh- all their TV shows are kind of like. Well, not all their TV shows. We always we fetishize British TV because we see like the really really interesting cool shit that yeah. breaks on our shores. But but like we don't have. I mean, they- T- talking to Brian Cox, I I only saw the shows. The, the physicist Brian, uh, <laughs> we, we see uh, Wonders of the Universe and there's that. But there's way better shows that don't air out here. We just don't get them. Like their TV sounds so much more interesting if you're into science shows. The flip side of it is, of course, like America's everything it's done. It's like it's it's like the 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 if you're going to admire anything about America, you have got to admire our commitment to capitalism because like our uh, the, like the money drives so many interesting things. So like the everything everything that's heightened is so heightened because of money. The idea that you could have a show like Cheers or the, the idea that television could be the cornerstone of all culture, which is neither good nor bad, but is a is a thing. Like the idea of the television show lasting ten years and being a part of your life and your children's life. Um, um, it, 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 that, that, that is the opposite side of the coin of like in, in Europe, they, they, when they started doing TV, they looked at it like a kind of a civic thing. Like they looked at it the way we look at cable access and they're like, you should, okay, everybody take turns making a TV show and make sure it has something to do with keeping England better. Um, and there's, there's still some kind of, there's still a little bit of that, of that juice behind their TV industry. Uh, whereas with us, it's just like fuck you, man. And, and, and like it's uh, uh, whatever. What am I talking about? Stick your head up your ass some more. 
<laughs> I, uh, Sorry. I got invited to go to uh, to the uh, the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, and go check it out, which I'm very excited about. Yeah, isn't that fucking red? Yeah. Although they did, they're turning it on soon, so I won't be able to see it while it's on. So I have to wait. Because we're all gonna time. die. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's gonna make a dragon. <laughs> I sat there and said, like, I said, explain to me. I, I know I know a little bit about the Higgs boson and and and, and whatnot, like, like explaining the Higgs thing. And he just he broke it down for me and, and started talking space time and like explaining space time to me. And I have no idea what he was talking about, but it was fascinating. And I felt very cool. And then we went outside, and there were stars out. And I go, okay, look, like, what's that? He goes, I, I, can't, I wish I could do his accent, because he's very charming and has a, a kind of a soft Manchester accent. And he's like, that's Jupiter. <laughs> I go, why don't, why, don't stars tw- uh, why, why don't planets twinkle? And he explained why. Like, I, I, was like, I was like, I'm going gonna, gonna to make out with this guy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stargazing with Professor Cox. It was very good. <laughs> <laughs> he's so charming. You know, um, the, well, they had a guy on the show. Uh, one of the guests when I, I I played the theme song that Eric Idle had written, and I got to play music on on the, on the live um, like the radio broadcast. And they had the, one of the guests was the cat that uh, created Chicharama, whose name I forget. And like he's into science, and uh, I won't remember if you say it. So I, uh, yes, you you won't, you won't remember Matt Craning's name or no 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 the, the guy <laughs> one of like the producers on it I guess uh, is it, someone or, said David X Cohen. I, de- I honestly I, w- I won't remember his name, but he was very good. And they were talking about science stuff, and uh, like, like they would make up science and change science to just you know because it's a TV show, it's a cartoon. They're like, we have to get to a planet that's 500 light years away. Well, the, you know, you, you realize it's traveling the speed of light. It would still take 500 years to get there. Like, yes, but we've sp- we sped up the speed of light. And the, and the crowd kind of chuckled. And then Brian Cox is like, No, no, that's wrong. You want to slow down the speed of light. The speed of light were 30 miles an hour. We could all get there. And the crowd cheered. They, everybody, everybody got, like, yeah, fucking science. It was, I, I, I was like, it still doesn't make any sense to me. I love that. Uh, you know, if you want to, if you want to see some science fiction that really makes sense, you should check out this uh, movie I just saw called the uh, the astronaut in the bookcase um, uh, colon interstellar. Uh, <laughs> It's based on a novel, The Astronaut in the Bookcase by Sapphire. It's like, uh, <laughs> whoo, it's a goodie. <laughs> not, 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 since, not since the sequel to 2001 <laughs> have, I, have I sat uh, now, through Professor, people in space. Professor Cox said he liked it because the science was all right. Like well, said. I'm sure it was. It yeah. seemed pretty right to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Not good. You didn't dig it. Nah, I was not into it. I've not seen it, so I can't. I can't. Worry and, uh, you know, we're Spencer, have you seen Interstellar? No, is that that Christopher Nolan guy? Yeah. Dan doesn't seem to like his films. No, I do. I do. I, I, that's why I'm actually confident enough to say, okay, come on, I'm letting that one over the plate. Like, 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 <laughs> I, if 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 Tarantino or the Coen Brothers made a movie that was like, uh, you know, I, mean, I think Christopher Nolan's talent and, and value to cinema it was, is it was dull or dreary or what? I was just, I just the story. I was just like, we're finding out time and time again that Christopher Nolan is a brilliant director who really desperately needs a quality screenplay to be placed in his hands before he before he starts shooting, because otherwise it's going to be like you're going to be watching like something that is like really beautiful and you're gonna you know two hours through it be like w- <laughs> <laughs> why <laughs> did you like her uh loved her yeah, yeah that's a good what, what, yeah i just wanted to yeah well that's a great i mean if you it's read it's that it's script it's you'd be that, like that, riveted that, that the entire time you're reading the script that's a sci-fi movie if you read the well. script for interstellar you would not be you would not it would not be a page turner you would be like wait it's 20 pages and he's still why is <laughs> What do you mean it looks like a smeared bookcase? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's back to the... Oh, he's the reason why the watch? Fuck you. <laughs> Dumb. I mean, I... Yeah, I, 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 I imagine that would be astounding if when those things were happening in the first two acts, I wasn't constantly going, What? <laughs> <laughs> Then, then it would be amazing that it all came back to the thing that made you go, what the fuck, what? <laughs> it's like some guy will be walking down the street going, like, man, it sure is hard living on Earth in the apocalypse. It's all dry. What, what, what the hell? What was that? Uh, some kind of silver entity just said gooba gooba gabu and then flew into the sun. This movie sounds Three hours good. later, whoa, I'm changing. I'm changing into something. I can't. A gooba gooba gooba. A gooba gooba gooba. A gooba. Whoa, there I am. 
Mama, that's me over there. Oh, goopa 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 go. Oh, goopa 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 go. Oh, I get it. Oh, wow. That's why the movie was stupid. Because of me. Bye. Credits. It's in the way that she uses. <laughs> Let's bring out Demorge Brown to play some Shadow Run, shall we? Demorge, are you here? I heard the wrong goddamn song. Demorge, are you with us? Oh, yeah. Demorge Brown. The day I met Demorge, I heal the love. Beep, 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 yes, beep. Sir, baby. <laughs> What's up, Demorge? Yes, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. How I are like, you doing? I like your green sleeves. Well, uh, you know. I'm a Dartmouth guy, so I wear Dartmouth green. How's your Arsenal doing? They, they, they Arsenal won yesterday. They did very well. Yeah, not so good in the international stuff, but good in the. Uh, in Let's the not forget. Let's forget the international stuff. Right. Yeah, you guys are into March Madness. No, this is a uh, this is English <laughs> soccer teams. He, oh. uh, uh, Demorge might be the biggest Arsenal fan I've ever met in my life, and I, I know a couple hard. You got to get out, man. He's hard ass. Than me. You know, what's that cat's name? Is kind of like a Filipino-looking dude who goes to the drawing room, but he knows you from the Fox and Hounds. He's very nice. His name I can never remember. He knows you. He loves Arsenal. He, he wears I'm more. Jeff, only I'm you can see that guy. I'm scared right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he, like, he, apparently he knows you quite well, but I can't think of his name. Oh, that's anyway. awesome. I have no idea who that is. He's, a, he's, <laughs> he's, he's always standing over your shoulder with a pair of scissors <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and a marathon uh, number on a, on a bloody tank top. Oh, and, he, and he's screaming something, a warning about something, but I can't. And then, yeah. I don't know. I'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what's, on, what's on your mind? What's new in your life, Demorge? Let's, let's catch up with you for a moment. Uh, All right, that was good. That's, uh, <laughs> let's play Shadow no, Run. No, 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 I, I do want to say this, though. Is there, is, there, is there a new trend in retail that people have to greet you when you're not, if you're not looking at them, they have to say, hi, how are you, sir? Welcome. Thank you for being I've, here. I've heard that complaint. No, no, I'm not joking. You're like, no, no, I've, I've, heard, I've heard that complaint that? In, with increasing frequency. I ignore people. Uh, it, 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 like this, an alarming rate. Now it's like three or four people. A I'll go, just go yeah. shopping for something. I know what I'm looking for. I know where it is. I go in. I go find it, and I'll walk in the door, and there'll be this voice behind me. It's kind of like, "How are you doing, sir?" Yeah. yeah. And I would turn around and look, but it's so faint that it's a. a I'm hearing a, more stories about confrontations with these people because they're hired to do a certain thing, and it's not just old people at a Walmart anymore. It's now it's like a 35 year old person who's been told that they have a certain activity log and they get they're they're starting to get aggressive aaron told me no i'm not joking i'm, I know, I'm not i'm not joking what, either why aaron do you told have me to say hello and when i leave why do you have to say be well sir or some weird <laughs> shit why? like that but they're like they're, they they want to uh, oh well, actually aaron was telling me a slightly different story because that that, that pet 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 store uh, the, petco, uh, the the one think, one. is it petco the um they, pet smart they uh, there's people that they'll just wet, let wander around the aisles that are like shilling their a specific brand of cat food or dog food, and those people like like they're really aggressive and weird and like Aaron got if stalked. It, by if one. it's Yukonuba, that, that that shit is for real. Oh, and there was a container container store lady. That Aaron had another story about this. Obviously, Aaron is, is the person container? of the couple who goes out into the world. <laughs> And she brings these but stories back. When you're in, like, when I, when I was in France or, or like, you're in Italy, people say bonjour. Everyone you pass says, says good, good day. Yeah. Uh, and, and in France, good day. Everyone says bonjour uh, wherever you go. And it's just a thing. You say bonjour. And, that, and that's it. You walk into a store, you say bonjour to the person that works there. And when you leave, you say merci. And that's it. Uh, but you, you, it's kind of rude to not do that, which is fine because that's just kind of par for the course. But I was in a hotel in San Antonio, Texas, where I wanted to I would kill people out of kindness because it was like e every 10 steps, like, good morning, how you doing? Hey, howdy. Like, it's like, it's like, I, I, you couldn't go 10 steps in that hotel with every fucking person <laughs> bidding you good day. And it's like, that's too much. And most people don't want to talk to other people. Yeah, also, if I, yeah, like you say, if, if I'm looking like, forward, if, I have, if I'm going places, like if it's eye contact. Well, if I know you. If it's eye contact and I see you and we pass each other, you go, hey, howdy, fine, deal. But uh, it was e you. You keep hearing it over your shoulder. And right, <laughs> you cannot <laughs> manufacture happiness. That's what I'm telling you. Play, yeah. yeah, keep playing the music. No, I, 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 I keep hitting the goddamn. Thing. Well, can I tell you two sad things before uh, we uh, start Shadowrun that are that are the, 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 like Aaron's not here. She's going to take care of Nigel, our grief dog, um, and uh, your grief dog. Yeah. W the the uh, and then Curtis is not here, which is tied to I don't even like, and I haven't even checked up on it since he told me about it. I asked him if he was coming to the show last week. We were in Austin, 
and he I, 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 I almost I, 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 I'm so conflicted because it's like well why why create the awareness of something that you're blissfully unaware of if you're unaware of it but uh, at the same time it almost feels strange with our new friend he's like going through this like dark dark thing like we were talking to Curtis he hosts that show with Bobby Carradine and uh, Bobby Carradine was just in this terrible, terrible uh, car accident. And he, uh, the last I looked, he's in uh, critical condition, oh, no. which I assume is. A, I, I googled, I googled his name, and unfortunately, and I never, if I could have clicked an off button that would, uh, an option, I would not have seen the car. Um, uh, you know, I saw the car that 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 he crashed in, and it it can't possibly be. Uh, 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 good. Uh, what, what the, the, you might call it critical. I think someone already took care of the, the, that job. The, so, so Curtis is like, you know, like that, that's a good friend of his. And he was like, he wanted to come and hang out with us, but his life has been like topsy turvy. Like he's, he's got, he's going through a little, we, we just met him and just made good friends with him really fast, but he, it's just as he's going through this like intensely dark, uh, tunnel. So I hope he comes back, and uh, um, on the off chance he's listening, our thoughts and prayers are with, with you and your folks. And uh, um, uh, that that's that's it. I don't know. I just wanted to say. I don't. Is, 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 that, is, is Bobby right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Is, is he Ever's father? Ever Carradine? Uh, I don't know. I think so. Yeah, and she's she's a she's a friend. She's great too. It's uh, great, very talented family. An awesome family. Yeah, so random. I, I, it's like, uh, whatever. What a, what, good job, Dan. You did it. You did it. Whatever, <laughs> whatever you were setting well, no, out I, to do. I, I love, let's let's reach out to uh, Curtis because we've we've all. I, I don't know about you guys. I've fallen in love with that guy. I think he's. No, he's yeah. amazing. He's, he's, he's incredible. <laughs> I mean, Maybe that's it why was, I, it was I, enough for me to have worked with him on on acceptable TV. That, yeah, yeah. that one morning yeah. was enough. Yeah, for yeah. Me, but then yeah, I was really week. taken with him at that point because he was so professional. He came in and uh, yeah, he was like. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, maybe that's why I brought it up is because I th- I feel like I feel so much affection for the guy and I, w- I felt like the audience did too and I wanted them to know that like he actually felt the exact same way it wasn't like a it wasn't like a bit like it was with LeVar Burton <laughs> <laughs> who just <laughs> just shot through our world like a meteor and charmed us and uh, and is apparently on to bigger and better things but uh, Cur- Cur- Curtis uh, Curtis really really enjoys his time here and oh, wants to good. wants to come back and stuff and is just going through yeah he hugged me one shit. time or a couple times actually and it made me feel uh, it made me feel quite special I like that all right it's a rare person the K twelve dude <laughs> that's a really good Curtis Armstrong <laughs> wow he d- he didn't think so. <laughs> Oh, I think he did. I think he did. Well, he said he didn't. <laughs> All right, Spencer, do you want to uh, uh, get us up to speed? I mean, can we? Well, are we able to? So, Aaron's not you here, are. and then we're we're shot. So, do you? Is there a talent you want to recruit, or we could recruit a talent? Should we get a, uh, a Mercy? Uh, what's her name? Mercy O'Donnell. Mercy, Mercy O'Donnell. What, you're, what's your name right there in the front? Celia. Pardon? Celia. Celia. Celia, welcome to the stage. Celia is going to play Mercy O'Donnell for us. You're breaking my heart. You're shaking my confidence daily. Oh, Celia. On to the next verse. I'm down on my knees. It gets, it I'm begging really you, please, to come wait, 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 home. Wait, so He's begging you to come home. He's not. Love in the afternoon. Oh. My teachers used to sing that. And I was like, <laughs> go on to the next verse. <laughs> <laughs> wait, so wait, we're allowed to sing almost an entire Simon and Garfunkel song, but I have to play crap like uh, unlicensed. Well, music I'm sure. Song. No, I'm, I sang. I sang another thing earlier. I'm sure we'll get like flagged on YouTube. Right, yeah. I'm counting on me being off key. Uh, <laughs> I don't think their algorithm bots will. Detect it. Celia? Metallica. You, we're, 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 real quick, where are you from? <laughs> You're from LA? Yeah. What, I, high, what high school did you go to? Oh, I went to Milken. It was a Jewish high school. Wh- why do you say that with such a distaste? I don't know. Milken? Well, her teachers were constantly singing about how they wanted to fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in college now, though. I'm in Brown at Rhode, in Rhode Island. Oh, good for you. Yeah. What are you studying there? Cognitive neuroscience. Cognitive Whoa. neuroscience. What does that mean uh, precisely? It's like... Mid, like midway t- between psych and like neuro. So you're not a neurologist. No. But you know about the neurology aspects. Like about aspects. brain stuff, yeah. So, so you're the psych- psych- psychology leg of knowing what the brain yeah, is doing. Yeah. Is that dream science? Is that yeah. to some it's extent? What? Is that dream science to some extent? No, it's no. more like like they go over memory and then what the actual neuro parts of like what the neurons are doing. It almost sounds like you have an out 
if uh, no matter what, if somebody comes to you with a problem, exactly, yeah. and you can go like, that's cognitive. Yeah. <laughs> and then someone else comes here and you're like, that's just the way your brain is. <laughs> Real quick, what's the agenesis of the corpus callosum? The agenesis of the corpus callosum. I don't know what agenesis is. Fail. <laughs> I don't know what the corpus callosum is. What's the corpus callosum? It's the part in your brain that separates the hemispheres. Right. The agenesis means it, it never it never formed. So that's when you get like a lot of uh, like crazy like autistic or like 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 Rain Man kind of people. Yeah. Like they, they, <laughs> we have people that they sever the corpus callosum. Um, for people decortication with seizures, for the crowd. they have to sever the corpus callosum because it helps their seizures. Yeah, yeah. And you like. It's hard. They get like those types of symptoms. All right, you pass. See, see you, everybody. All right, Spencer. We have, we have a very smart gal up on stage right now. So let's let's uh, let's. Like get that a guy s- that had that rod blow up through his brain. Is he, do, they, do, they, do they? I saw that in a, just a show about. Cool. He was like it was like the old old West Times or something, and he had like a thing blow up through his. Phineas Cage. Okay. Uh, and and they, and his bra- he's, Phineas Gage. And they, uh, I think they they separated his left and right yeah. brain. I don't know. That's when they started learning about the left and right brain. from crossing over. Yeah. From D- Dan, Dan, next to the, Dan yeah. and I know if you have a daughter that you and Aaron want to name her uh, Paloma, but if you have a boy, will, can it please be Phineas? <laughs> Phineas. I, a- Aaron will ultimately, you know, she can. Or a Genesis. A Genesis. A Genesis. <laughs> I don't know to name my kid a Genesis. <laughs> All right, Spencer, uh, get us up to speed, please. All right. Uh, this Harmon Town recap was written. Oh, but brother! Let's be safe. Can, can we just <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. Oh, god, I'm sorry. I thought that you were. And by Warby Parker. <laughs> no, okay. Last time on Shadow Run. Wait, who was it written by? I'm sorry, you were trying to give them credit. And I, I was trying. Well, go ahead. I'm sorry. Let's be safe. Let's be safe. He sure wrote it. He wrote the last one too. Okay. Last time on Shadow Run. Time. Mercy O'Donnell and Jim Nightblade, through deception and cunning, had pinpointed Baldwin Brown. They found him sleeping in the basement of his associate, Jesse Yellowman. Upon receiving a shocking awakening, Brown and Yellowman activated their drone, which unleashed a rain of gunfire. Mercy gracefully dove out of the way as Nightblade shot down the belligerent machine with practiced ease. Our heroes then attempted to subdue the drug-dealing duo with some old-fashioned grappling. At a critical moment, Eve Libertine barged in to save the day with a powerful stun bolt to Yellowman's chest. The gang successfully app- apprehended Brown, handed him over to the Johnson, and received their well-earned payments. What will they do with the 5,000 new yen apiece? What mission will they accept next? What does life hold for our brave heroes? Find out on an all-new Harmontown Shadow Run time. Thank you. Yay. I love you, Spencer. I love everybody forever. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. So do you guys know what's happening? Yeah, we, uh, we just successfully completed a thing. You sure did. We, we just got paid. Yeah. Where, where, are we, where are we physically standing right now? Uh, let's say you're back at Hank's Last Stand, the bar. Hmm. This is where we met Weird Dave. What was his name? Perfect Frank? What? <laughs> what, was our, what was our original? Uh, new uh, new Daryl? What was no. his name? <laughs> <laughs> All of those names were the best name. <laughs> No, uh, this is cool. Cool Dennis sang cool Dennis. here, <laughs> <laughs> but he uh, sang, you know, to meet with Teddy. Teddy's Teddy's your boy. He's the fixer. Well, with my permission, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to control everything. But if we're cutting to a bar, I would, I wouldn't mind being the guy that just finished breaking the billiard uh, ball, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, on the cut, and then, and then I, and then I continue my sentence by going like. I just, I don't know, something just doesn't add up. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted to be that guy. Right. The billiard guy. Every time someone uh, the, does a billiard shot in a bar, I always think, oh, man, there's a new scene starting. <laughs> uh, now, Nightblade, I know that you suffer from severe alcoholism. You're not going to get fucked up again in case we need you, are you? Uh, <laughs> it's a I lot to react to the odds there. are pretty good in that favor. Because I, 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 I say this as a, I have a mild addiction, too. I, I, I go off in the corner, and I, I meet my drug dealer, and I, and I, I buy some psyche. What's, uh, what's your drug dealer's name? Uh, Ray Ray. 
Wait, are, you, are you is is she are you explaining that to us or are you saying an oh, action no, I, that I, you're I, doing? I, I don't mind telling you. I, I have a mild, it's kind of a mild like like recreational addiction to this drug called psyche, which kind of makes my intuition and logic go up and uh, kind of like it's like mushrooms, but like it's good for shamans and stuff. Well, uh, you know, I, you're a young kid. I don't think you should do that shit. But <laughs> <laughs> I can stop whenever I want. You know, it's just. It's just like <laughs> Listen, kid. Uh, I drink to forget mistakes I made when I was your age. You know, you get a chance to not make them. I, I take another shot. I don't even know what <laughs> if I'm solids or stripes. <laughs> it's solids. Did we get another assignment from our person? Because we just caught Baldwin Brown. That's true. Yeah, we haven't yet. Mercy, why don't you go talk to Teddy, our fixer, and see if we got more uh, a way to make some more uh, s- some more Nuyen. Did you say we haven't caught? No, we no got you haven't got we a did. new. Oh, oh, oh we haven't. Yeah. We haven't gotten one. No, yeah. yeah. Wait, well, well, hold we'll on. Can you, we'll well, can, can you hold on a second? Yeah. Look, don't you think? Don't you think? Uh, don't you? Do you guys ever feel kind of bad about about stuff? Like we got that guy, and didn't he? He didn't really do anything wrong. <laughs> I'm not that guy. I shouldn't be playing that role. I don't care. Okay, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Night, Nightblade, how drunk are you right <laughs> now? <laughs> I don't, never mind. I forgot. I shouldn't care. Okay. I don't care. <laughs> no, no. But look, look. We, uh, we, we broke a lot of eggs back there. We, we, we killed a few people. We, we certainly stunned a lot of people uh, with electricity. But, you know, I mean, I guess that's the life we've chosen. I, I, I never feel good about it. And believe me, going forward, I'm going to start taking strides to be non lethal any way that I can. Just wonder on these streets that are always looking to medicate themselves with the idea of a be better than better than life chip is uh, not going to be a Pandora's box. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it was just a short mission, I'm fine. <laughs> I don't need to make a bigger deal out of it. Oh, are you saying that, that, that this might come back to bite us in the ass? Or we, I, we haven't I, seen I'm, the just last pi- I'm just picking at it like a kitten picks at a knot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to untie it. I just... Just a thicker piece of thread than usual. It is, you know, uh, God, you know. So I'm sorry. Forget. Is, uh, I've said too much. I'm a little. I, I would. I would say that it's uh, in my estimation that this is um, the way that we work. Uh, that it is all. Uh, life is a mission now. Uh, we're on the dark side. He's you right. You know right. So there is nothing but short missions and long missions, and the longer mission is to stay alive. You yeah. guys, uh, when I was, uh, I would say, let him play with his balls. <laughs> In and the meantime, I perhaps will take some of this uh, uh, and I will uh, uh, purchase, uh, indulge uh, my own uh, active soft uh, <laughs> addiction <laughs> and uh, learn some new accents, other, <laughs> other ways to be, other things to do. Oh, wait, wait, we, we've kind of grown to love your, your kind of Norwegian accent. I think it's... Uh, oh, but you did not even notice that I changed and became uh, more precise with my accent <laughs> and, uh, over time. What is it now? Well, now it is a skill soft, an, ant- an active soft. Because there was some problem before, people saying it was Germanic and, and Herzogish. I thought it was... <laughs> So what I've done is I have uh, suspended over a, a bulb and uh, over a pool of water, <laughs> <laughs> listening to Vangelis again, but this time listening to Soil Festivities, which I think is his one of his best albums, <laughs> and uh, learned a more uh, academic, uh, by according to Hoyle, uh, Norwegian accent, uh, one from Oslo. The Oslo accent. It sounds, it's, it's like this. It sounds fantastic. I love it. Well, I gotta say, I really love hanging out with you guys. I mean, when we're not <laughs> kicking ass, it's just it's just fun to shoot pool, get high, and talk shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, a point taken though. Uh, before that, uh, you know, they don't call them they don't call them picnic runs. You guys, can I t- can I can I tell you a little story? I had about that stored up for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you when I was did, a, when I was a little girl and I was living out in the woods with the uh, with the Salish Indians because I had to flee my family and then live out there and like, learn the, the shamanistic ways. There was a st- there's a story that means a lot to me that I think w- would probably help maybe may- maybe mean something to you guys too. It's, it's a young young Indian scout and he's walking around by a riverbed and he sees a bear <laughs> and uh, and the bear. Is looking for salmon, and he salmon keep jumping by him, and the bear is like, I can't catch any salmon, <laughs> and the salmon keep jumping by, and he's like, I can't catch any salmon. The, the young Indian scout walks up and says, Oh my God, a talking bear. <laughs> 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 
It's a little little Salish comedy for you. <laughs> this is probably probably get a new mission, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Wet your knee, yeah, yeah. Wet your knee, yeah, yeah. Hey, Mer- Mercy, why don't you go talk to Teddy and see if, uh, if we if we got anything new on the burner? Teddy, we just got a lot of we just got a lot of money from you. We'd like some more. Do you have any? Do you have any hookups? Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, I gotta tell you guys, I've been I've been watching your progress. You uh, you got on you got on security films. You know, there's footage of you. The, the people the know you're done. out there. It's it's no good. I tried I tried to do what I can to kind of clear your traces. You know, no, don't worry about it. No need to pay me or anything. But you got to watch out, man. You had police on your tail. This is how people die. This is how shadow runners get uh get killed. What would it cost for you to perhaps uh, 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 stumble across some sort of mission for us? Oh, you know, I don't know. It's it's all all whatever. I I'll find. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. And uh, you know, as soon as as soon as he finishes speaking, as if on cue, you see an older elvish man scramble into the bar, the bar you're all in, in fact, not just any bar. <laughs> he's he's wearing a fine Italian suit, although it's wrinkled and must, as is the man's hair, and he's clutching a pistol. He looks like he hasn't slept in days. I would like slept. to perhaps activate uh, both at the same time uh, my uh, ability to uh, uh, with combat sense and also uh, to detect enemies to see if this one is perhaps a problem. <laughs> uh, you use your <laughs> skill to detect enemies. And I, 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 I say to Hordegard... But and also to induce laughter. I, I, I say to Hordegard, that, you're sounding really Norwegian right now. This is really good. I thought at that point he sounded more like Anatolian than he's ever sounded. <laughs> I'm also the same person I was when I started. <laughs> Aw, he's, so, he's insecure. <laughs> I've You're never had great. the home. <laughs> oh. So what's up with this? What's up, what's up with this elder guy? He's got a pistol <laughs> he's in his hand. Waving a, he's waving a pistol around. Yeah. He <laughs> doesn't <laughs> appear to be an enemy, though. No, he's not an enemy. He's, <laughs> so <laughs> he's just a pal waving around a pistol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, perhaps the two of you will begin to uh, continue to talk, uh, and I will keep one eye on this uh, this intruder. Uh, maybe I better go uh, talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, what do you do? What do you say? Hey, buddy, uh, you know, and I, I, I hold out my, my, my hands in that way that will allow my Ares Predator to come out of my robot arm okay. and shoot him at a moment's notice. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'm just like, just sexy and cool <laughs> and friendly. And I'm like, hey, man, I remember having a night like this. <laughs> I solved it with a game of billiards. You could, you could start the next scene. I just want to cut to a new scene now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's just like so. He's, anyways, yeah, right? he's he's also playing pool. It's a, it's a skill. And I that's have my match. problem. <laughs> well, it sounds like you should. You need a shadow. Hey, Mer- Mercy, yeah, you're good. With, you're good with people. Go fi- go find out what this guy's deal is. What, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why why do you have that pistol? Oh, know. for protection. For protection from who? From everybody. I gotta get my voice on straight. Hold on. Oh no! Nope. <laughs> okay. Sorry, sorry, everybody. Is Teddy there? Find me, Teddy. You can trust me. Look, I mean, look at this face. I trust you. Just find me, Teddy. Teddy's right over there. He's, he's over at the bar. Oh, hey, Teddy. Tom, Teddy, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I need your help. The mob's got my son Jelly. I fell into a bad way. The Spagoolies, they're making me pay a protection fee to keep the street gangs off of my hoop. But they raised the rates too high and I couldn't pay. The Spagoolies are holding my dear boy Jelly hostage until I pay up. And if I don't pay back in a week, they're going to start repudescing the digits. I I can't offer you much, but I can give you $2,000 a piece and an eternal debt of gratitude if you find my son. I take it all back. This is an awesome podcast. <laughs> uh, $2,000 a piece? Mercy, ask for more. I meant New Year. 5000 We got 5000 last time. I mean, I, if, I could, if I could pay you guys 5000 I could ransom my son. I tell you, you got to help me, please. I don't know. Uh, is there a possibility you, you could pay others? more than 2000 
I really like your shoes. I mean, if that's what it takes, <laughs> I give you my shoes. They made by, by my mama. Give us one now and then one when we finish the job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's very reasonable. <laughs> she, she, she drives a hard bargain. <laughs> We, we really are. It's like not good guys. <laughs> I mean, one come on. Shoes. It's not brain surgery. Oh, wait, it is. <laughs> what, what, what do you say? Oh, uh, so uh, tell me more about these Spagoolies. Oh, Arturo Spaguli, he's a big dick. <laughs> he's running his mouth, but you can find him all over the place. I bet if you talk to him, he'll be able to find my son. But he's real stupid. Wait, wait. Uh, Arturo Spaguli has your son, or he's... I don't know if he has my son, but I bet he knows someone but, who knows something. But you know the Spagulis have got your son. They're holding him ransom for ransom right now. Oh, yeah, the Spagulis. <laughs> so we got to talk to one of the Spagulis to get him back. I'd recommend Arturo. Arturo Spaguli. Yeah. What's your connection with Arturo? What? What's your connection with Arturo? He's a big dick. <laughs> What do you what do you do again? What's your name? My name's Ryan Dervish. <laughs> and your son is named Jelly Dervish? Yeah. All right. I'm a medicine man. What sort of medicine do you practice? The right kinds. <laughs> do you have any active shops for sale? Is that kind of medicine? I didn't quite hear that. Do you have any active shops for sale? That kind of medicine? Uh oh. No, I do not. Hey, can you heal me up a bit? I've taken some stun damage lately over the last uh, la last few hours. Can you heal me up a bit? Oh, you know, I got this. Zip. <laughs> Zip. <laughs> <laughs> he, <laughs> he, <laughs> he pulls uh, he pulls a patch out of his pants and he gives it to you. I put it on my chest. It's like. <laughs> You feel, you feel, it's like a thousand coffees running through your veins. You're all, you're all back to Norman. Back to Norman. All right. I'm, I'm good. I'm a little, little jinky, but I'm good. You guys will save my son, though, no? Sure. You got any, uh, you got a photograph of your kid? Oh, yeah. Let's have it. Here it is. It's right off his Instagram. <laughs> it's still around, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You can't tell that's timeless? <laughs> I don't know who took him, but my best guess is that Arturo knows a thing or two. And look, if you end up putting some bodies in the ground, make it look like someone else did the job. I'll pay some extra to keep those shitheads off my back for a while and to leave my name out of this. Which is... Ryan Dervish. <laughs> <laughs> Find Arturo. Find what he knows. I feel like it's going to be easy to keep his name out of this. <laughs> Uh, I'm never going to remember it. Mr. Dervish, as, as a fellow elf and a fellow medicine woman, uh, you got my word. We're going to get we're gonna get your son back. No questions Can asked. Can I use the, my power to uh, mind probe just to make sure that the landscape is as he describes it? I'm feeling like my mind's being probed right now. What's, the, what's the going on? Well, it's just a sort of, uh, it's what we call the normal vetting process before we start. He starts screaming, and you can read into his thoughts. It's, it's very uncomfortable for him, but you see great shame in his, his business. You see his business has not been doing so well. He can't pay the mob so much. It's really a tough time for this guy's life, and he's at his wit's end. He's just carrying a pistol around in public. I feel bad now. So we let him off the hook, and then I say, uh, uh, look, uh, I apologize, but we have to cover our... Uh, uh, our bottoms. That was an excruciating experience. Use your own medicine. <laughs> hmm. Okay. You're a doctor. Use H your own medicine. Hortigard, uh, can you, can, <laughs> Hortigard, can you use your uh, your tech sense and, and find out to get a lead on uh, on Arturo Spaguli? Well, it, uh, uh, I have uh, contact. Uh, his name is uh, Ritz. His mafioso contact. Is there any way I could contact him and possibly uh, find uh, some sort of con that's what what he's got, what he knows. Yeah, yeah, you could definitely call up Ritz on his comm link. That's what I'm trying to do. All right. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop. But I have, to, I have, uh, I have AT and T, and so the connection is uh, spotty. <laughs> All right, you get him. This is Ritz. Ritz, uh, hold the guard here. Uh, just a question: uh, uh, If you heard of uh, Arturo, the big dick, uh, a mafioso big dick. Uh, 
uh, where we might find him uh, if he in fact exists and if he possibly is uh, holding a child. <laughs> I don't know. I, there's a lot of. Is he like Egghead, where he tries to throw his name into things a lot? Like that's excellent. <laughs> the brand is the brand, sir. <laughs> there, there's, there's a lot of Arturos in the underworld. Who are you talking about? Arturo's don't bullshit. Me, Arturo Spaguli. Spaguli. <laughs> what? Spaguli. Spaguli. Oh yeah, I know Arturo Spaguli. Why didn't you just say so? Because I assumed we had a relationship, but I was, of course, wrong for the last time. I'm just saying, there's at least seven or eight big movers and shakers named Arturo in the criminal underground. So to focus and to be precise, um, this Spicoli, mm. have you information? Oh, yeah, you know, that guy, he loves his fast food. All those Spigoolies, they're not, you know, they're not hot and they're not hot in all these nice bars or Italian restaurants. They just... Keep it simple. They hang out at the Burger Tyrant. <laughs> this Burger Tyrant, is this simply a restaurant where they hang out, or is it more of a, a, a secure compound? Uh, it's really just more of a chain restaurant. Which Burger Tyrant? Is it the one on Capitol Hill, or is it the one down on uh, down in Pioneer Square? Which one is it? Oh, it's on Guadalupe. On Guadalupe. <laughs> so then, uh, fellas, I hope that you are hungry. <laughs> I, 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 I'll tell you what. We have some I'm, I'm hungry for adventure. What a cliffhanger! <laughs> Next week we go to eat. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna go to the Burger Tyrants, <laughs> and we're going to take all the sauces and eat in the drive-through. Let's hear it for Celia, everybody. Celia. Very well done. Demorge Brown, Spencer Crittenden. Curtis Armstrong, we love you. Come back soon. We hope you're well. Thank you, everybody here. I'm Jeff Davis. One more time for your mayor, Dan Harmon, everybody. Thank you. Well, I think the next episode of Community is the one that's directed by our friend uh, here at the podcast, Bobcat Goldthwait. I think it's the, I think the next one. Bobcat. And it, it's, it's really good. I really like it. Fantastic. Good night, all. Did you get any of that? It's a good show!